Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website presents eight self improvement lessons which come from my 31 years as a family therapist and 70 years of studying us human critters. The third of these eight lessons focuses on good grief. All of us throughout our lives form attachments if we're mentally healthy and eventually the bonds that we form with precious people, things, uh, abstract things, break. Nature provides us with a way of adapting to these losses. It's called grief. Grieving often is a forgotten subject. Uh, many people don't know much about it and they don't know, they don't want to know much about it. As a therapist, I've observed a high percentage of well over a thousand clients and students, most of whom survived early childhood trauma. Many of my clients and students have described being, quote, depressed. I have begun to suspect and now believe much of what is called depression is really blocked grief. The importance of this is people who seek relief by medication cannot get relief if they need to grieve. In fact, medication blocks the healthy response of grief. The purpose of this video is to summarize the thoughts I've got for over 30 some years of pondering what's the difference between depression and grieving? How can you tell? <clears throat> um, the symptoms of grieving and depression overlap or in many ways are similar. Stop to think. When someone says, how do you know if someone's depressed? Think of the symptoms that, you, that come to your mind. Um, often the answer says something like, <clears throat> Well, uh, prolonged sadness, deep sadness, despair, apathy, loss of interest in life, inability to enjoy the pleasures in life, sometimes difficulty sleeping, sometimes loss of appetite, uh, sometimes bursts of anger or irritability, sometimes crying episodes or, quote, jags, unquote, with or without any supposed reason. Um, in extreme cases, some people have suicidal thoughts. They want to end their life because they feel despairing, which means hopeless. The symptoms of grief, stages of grief, and of depression are very, very similar. My proposal here is that most average people, including uh, human service professionals and other college educated people often don't know how to distinguish between depression and grief. My experience over and over and over with hundreds of clients is those of us who were traumatized when we were very young, which is many, high percentage of the population, were taught uh, not to grieve, not to grieve well, not to grieve in public, to get over grief as fast as possible, which goes against nature, it's like to digest your food faster. Many such uh, injured children come into adulthood and they, when they experience a loss uh, and they experience the symptoms of grieving, instead of saying, oh, I'm healthy, I'm grieving, this is good, let me be patient as the process unfolds and completes. They say, oh, uh-oh, I'm depressed, or people around them say, well, you're really depressed, including doctors. Often, I think, doctors over-prescribe medication, under-prescribe the holistic solution, saying, you know, it might be good to review if you've lost something of importance in your life recently, Perhaps you're grieving and you don't need medication. So, I, 
I mean to offer you the question, the next time you feel unusually sad, either in scope or duration or intensity, instead of assuming that you are, quote, depressed, also include the possibility maybe you are undergoing the normal healing process of grief. One way you can help yourself and help the people you care about in making this distinction. Study lesson one in my website. It's a nonprofit. There are no ads. I'm not selling anything except awareness. Lesson one will alert you to whether your true self is running your life or whether you are controlled by a well-meaning, myopic, false self. False selves indicate childhood trauma. Frequently, they mean you're not going to be able to grieve very well. So study lesson one and find out who's really running your life. If it's a false self, dedicate yourself to freeing your true self. That will indirectly, among many other benefits, that will help you grieve. The second thing I urge you to do, invest time studying lesson three in the Break the Cycle website. Give yourself information that I suspect you were not given by your parents or your teachers. Give yourself basic information about the normal, healthy, three-level process of grieving. Some of the other videos in this series will give you an intriguing quiz to see how much do you know about healthy grieving. You probably don't know what you don't know. Study the three levels of grieving and the phases that comprise the grief. Doing that will help you understand, am I grieving? If so, where am I in the process? Am I done or do I have more? Study Lessons 1 and Lessons 3. The next time you meet someone that says, oh, I'm depressed, consider alerting them to the possibility, maybe you're not depressed, maybe you're grieving. That includes medical professionals and therapists of every type. As in my experience, many of us, I'm a therapist, I was never trained ever on uh, depression, the roots of it, and how it, or grieving, and how those two compare and manifest, and how to differentiate them. So, I hope this will widen your awareness as you seek a serene and happy life, and you seek to provide that for the people in your family and your friendship circle. Be aware of the distinction between depression and normal, healthy grief. Thanks for watching.